This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I want to do a little bit more of a comparison between different Bitcoin Lightning wallets. We've been talking about Liquid, we've been talking about Lightning. If you want to catch up to the discussion, I'll link to the videos in the particular order you should watch them. Bitcoin and the Liquid Network, followed by Scaling Bitcoin with Lightning and Liquid is Layer 2 Bitcoin and Shipcoin. Just to review quickly these different networks so we can have a discussion today. Bitcoin Network, also known as Layer 1 on-chain or the base layer. This is the Bitcoin blockchain as well. The Lightning Network, which is a Layer 2 built on top of the Bitcoin Network. The Lightning Network is a network of payment channels. It's not a blockchain. It's interconnected payment channels and not all channels connect to each other. The Liquid Network, another Layer 2. Some people prefer to refer to it as a sidechain. This is a blockchain just like the Bitcoin Network is, a blockchain with one minute block times, deterministic block times rather than 10 minute probabilistic block times as the Bitcoin network has. Now both Lightning and Liquid require you to lock up BTC on layer one on the on chain on the base layer before you can use it. And this is how it's ensured that the overall supply of 21 million Bitcoin is not increased. Yesterday we talked about the Aqua wallet and there were a lot of questions about it and how it compares to other Lightning wallets, which is what I want to talk about today. As we said yesterday, Aqua is basically a liquid, an LBTC wallet that swaps in and out of LBTC, which is Bitcoin locked up on the liquid network. It's basically a liquid wallet that swaps in and out of LBTC when you need to send or receive sats on the Lightning network. So it's not a pure Lightning wallet, as many of these are understood. On Aqua, when you're using the Aqua wallet, when you receive a Lightning transaction, it's immediately converted to LBTC for storage. This allows you to have a self-custodial solution, which is really nice. When you send a Lightning transaction using Aqua, it takes some of your LBTC and swaps it for SATs on the Lightning network and then sends it to the Lightning address that you specify. Now, under what conditions might this be useful? When on-chain Bitcoin layer one transaction fees are too high for you, even when you're just using Bitcoin on the Lightning network and you're trying to stay on the Lightning network, on-chain transaction fees can frequently be required. If you open up a new payment channel, if you close a payment channel, you're going to have to pay on-chain fees. If you splice out liquidity or if you splice in, if you add in liquidity to your channel, all of this requires on-chain transaction fees. And by using Liquid as your quote-unquote Lightning base layer, instead of using on-chain Bitcoin as your quote-unquote Lightning base layer, you can definitely save on transaction fees. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to help to support the channel. Click the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, and share this video with a friend or family member. This really does help the channel. Now, what's the trade-off between using Liquid and the Aqua Wallet and using on-chain Bitcoin? Well, LBTC is not as self-sovereign as on-chain BTC since the Liquid Federation could theoretically rug you or refuse to exchange your LBTC for BTC, which is locked up in their multisig. But all the incentives work against this. Liquid Federation functionaries who are in charge of this are public, well-respected corporations who could lose people's trust if they become bad actors. Nevertheless, in an extreme situation, in an extreme crisis or crackdown, governments worldwide could collude to try to apply pressure to these liquid functionaries. If you're an average person, though, in the developed world and have only, let's say, $100 worth of LBTC and Aqua, it's probably not a big deal. You'd be fine if this $100 was stolen. If you're in a developing country, that may be a much larger amount. Also, by using Liquid as the base layer, Aqua is able to help beginners avoid the complexities. Beginners to Bitcoin help them avoid the complexities which come with managing Lightning payment channels in a non-custodial setup. For example, when you first set up the Phoenix wallet, as we went over a few months ago, this is another really well-respected Lightning wallet that's unfortunately no longer available in the US. But when you first set up the Phoenix wallet on your phone, you need to buy inbound liquidity or at least send and then withdraw a large initial payment in order to fund the channel so you don't get hit with lots of little on-chain or larger on-chain transaction fees. And this is not something that's easy to explain to a beginner. I have a video about it out there. But this is uh, one of the things that the Aqua Wallet tries to avoid. 
having to deal with channels like this. As I said, Phoenix Wallet's no, no, no longer available in the US, and it's mostly not available because the parent company was also the main Lightning service provider, the main LSP that provided this liquidity, these, this inbound channel liquidity, and was worried about the regulatory environment, especially after Sa the samurai guys got in trouble. So in practice, when you use Aqua, you're dependent on the Liquid Federation, but you're also quite dependent with other wa other wallets. When you use Phoenix, you're dependent, or you were dependent on its parent company, Async, not closing its channel with you. So the question is, which one offers more self-sovereignty? It's difficult to say, who do you trust? Liquid Federation, we can still use their product in the US. Phoenix, as we said, has now pulled out. A few questions from viewers yesterday. Hey Matt, why are you promoting Liquid so much but not Lightning? Because of channel management. I mean, one can literally just open a channel to, for instance, Kraken to be connected to the world. No. And my response, no, unfortunately, you cannot. Kraken will never open up a channel with a pleb. And this is true for all the big companies. I'm sure Strike would never open up a channel directly with me or you. There are compliance and regulatory reasons, and they also would need to fund these channels. So it might not make economic sense to type capital in channels with really small channel partners like myself. So this is not a solution. Uh, and I do say I do love the Lightning Network and have covered it extensively on this channel. How does the Aqua Wallet compare to the Moon Wallet? Moon Wallet's a great wallet, but the problem is it needs to do an on-chain transaction using a submarine swap. Every single time you send or receive a Lightning transaction, this makes it unusable as we experienced a few months back in a high on-chain transaction fee environment because you, each time you do a Lightning transaction, you are still paying an on-chain fee. And this is very convenient for beginners, but it's not economically uh, feasible in high fee environments. So you can still use your Moon Wallet in low fee environments. It makes sense. In higher fee environments, you might want to look into something like Aqua. And the thing about Moon Wallet is if you're paying high on-chain fees each time, you might as well just use on-chain Bitcoin to begin with. Unless, of course, you're doing it over Lightning for the increased speed. So this is one of the problems with paying high fees and using Lightning. You don't have the same security guarantees that you do on on chain you still have very strong security guarantees but they're not quite as good now moon is still remains a great wallet for beginners thanks to the simple interface but moon does cause blockchain bloat at the base layer as well it's a rather inefficient wallet as mononaut points out here how the moon wallet was bloating the utxo set a few months back people also asked in that video about the wallet of satoshi which we talk, talked about a little bit on this channel very elegant and simple to use wallet it's custodial though you don't hold your own private keys it's not private it does support lightning and on chain which is nice it used to be non-kyc and uh, unfortunately is no longer available in the US, though it is still available in different parts of the world. There's the Strike Wallet, another mobile wallet. Great wallet for beginners, also offers both on-chain and Lightning payments. It's also custodial, just like Wallet of Satoshi. You don't get to hold your own private keys, but you need to trust the parent company. It's not private. They see everything that you do, and it does require KYC, as far as I can tell. You need to associate your personal information with it. By contrast, Aqua Wallet, you can just download and start using without needing to give any to give your name and link a bank account, etc. Strike, though, is a great user experience. You could see me using it in yesterday's video to send funds to the Aqua Wallet. People have asked, why do I often use Strike to send payments in my videos? And it's actually a good question. You may not realize why I do it. I do it to help to protect my privacy and prevent viewers from following me on chain after the video. This way I don't have to black out any Bitcoin addresses that I use. I still display all the Bitcoin addresses in the video. And what I do, for example, yesterday I sent some sats from Strike to Aqua when I made yesterday's video. Then when I was done, I sent the sats back to Strike. If I'd sent them to cold storage and merged them with my cold storage holdings, you might be able to see how much Bitcoin I'm holding in various wallets. But instead, I just buy the sats from Strike, I use them in my video, I send them back to Strike, and it gives me privacy in terms of my Bitcoin holdings. Of course, Strike can see everything I'm doing, but they are also, I'm, not, I'm never merging these sats with my uh, deep cold storage sats. Strike can follow me on chain, but YouTube viewers cannot. And this is something you guys can use too. You can use a custodial wallet like Strike to get privacy from your friends. This is sort of the lazy man's 
coin join if you don't want people to see where your sats are coming from there's also the blue wallet which we've talked about on this channel unfortunately they no longer offer built-in lightning you have to connect it to your own lightning node as of may of 31st of last year so it's still a very good mobile wallet and desktop wallet uh, as a hot wallet but it is no longer a really easy to use lightning wallet for people who are just getting started there's a mutiny wallet which is a great wallet that you can run even in your browser as a progressive web app this is a great solution if the big tech companies ever decide to eliminate all lightning wallets from the various app stores from the app store and from the google play store you can still use mutiny inside of any browser and i do cover this in these two videos which i'll link to in the description notes below finally there's the zeus wallet which i still need to cover i don't have a lot of experience using this if you have any input on this i'd definitely be interested in hearing about it in the comment section below as well as people letting me know and letting us know what's your favorite lightning wallet and why do you like it maybe there's some wallets out there that i should be covering that i did not mention in the last few videos if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when i publish my next video and let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next video